Last week I asked you to eat my balls, this week I'm asking you to beat the meat. Staying real brand friendly on this channel lately, clearly. But trust me, it is all for your benefit. You see, right now there's a conspiracy afoot when it comes to the way that we rate and order meat. You go to the supermarket and all you see are Prime logos. Uh, not that Prime, I mean USDA Prime. All over the meat counter. Then there's Choice, Select, your meat's getting graded, like it's school or something. Then you got yourself Wagyu on everything. Wagyu burgers, tacos, Wagyu pizza. Pizza. And all of it is there as a means of confusing you, of getting more dollars out of your wallet. So today we're gonna save you the confusion by exposing to you some meat. Hello internet, welcome to Food Theory, the channel that's always well done. And today friends, I've got some beef with beef, specifically the conspiracy around Wagyu meat. Now, no doubt you've come across Wagyu at some point in your life. It's a word that's become associated with the cream of the crop as it comes to our carnivorous consumptions. Sorry, Amy. But what exactly is Wagyu? Well, Wagyu just literally translates to Japanese cattle. And what makes Wagyu special is how incredibly attentive Japanese ranchers are to bloodlines, all in an effort to preserve the traits of each individual family tree. As such, a purebred cow in Japan has got to be genetically tied to one of four Japanese-born breeds, the Japanese Brown, the Japanese Pulled, Japanese Shorthorn, or the most prevalent, the Japanese Black. In total, Japanese Wagyu cattle population currently sits at just around two and a half million steer, a super limited number which is how the prestige and price for this stuff got to be so high. Each Wagyu cow can cost up to $30,000, compared to about $2,500 for a regular beef cow, and the price that you're paying for a typical steak of Wagyu can be upwards of $250 per pound as opposed to something like 10 or 12. That said, is Wagyu beef truly worth the hype? When I'm paying like 25 or 35 bucks for a Wagyu burger, is that really worth it? The answer is honestly expose some deep-seated lies that exist within the food industry that you as a consumer must know about. So let's just dispel some hype with knowledge in order to make you the true master of the meats. Now there are a lot of misconceptions about Wagyu that we need to carve through today. First and foremost, despite it being seen as this prestigious ancient category of Japanese beef tradition, it's actually a fairly modern thing. You see, Japan was a vegetarian, or technically a pescatarian nation for over a thousand years. Back in the 6th and 7th centuries, Japan was being introduced to Buddhism through China and Korea. And in the year 675, Japan's 40th Emperor Tenmu enacted a law to prohibit the eating of animals to coincide with Buddhist beliefs. This, though, was overturned in the late 19th century during the Meiji Revolution, which saw a rise of Western influence and a fall of the Buddhist leadership. Why do I speed through all that history? Well, that right there shows you that Wagyu isn't some ancient tradition. The Wagyu that we're all familiar with today didn't really become a thing until the early 1900s, and didn't even start getting exported to other countries until the 1990s. Secondly, Wagyu has this association with cows that have been massaged out in the fields, where they listen to classical music all day, getting fed an exclusive diet of beer, all to get that most tender, flavorful meat. Again, this is just flat out wrong. Remember, the word Wagyu just means Japanese cattle, cows from Japan. Wagyu alone is basically meaningless. What you really need to know is the meat's grade. You see, different countries have themselves different grading systems when it comes to meat. In Japan, beef is given a quality score known as the BMS, or the Beef Marbling Standard. This ranking goes from 1 to 12 based mainly on intramuscular fat. That's not just talking about the amount of fat, but how abundantly and evenly it's dispersed throughout the muscle tissue. This is important because when you cook it, the fat melts, and not only keeps the meat tender and juicy, but also gives it that meaty umami flavor that carnivores love. As you can imagine, the higher the score on the BMS, the more premium it's considered. In fact, anything less than a three, not even factored in because there's no actual marbling. Here, you can actually see the visual difference in the fat levels between a three and a 12, the highest and the most flavorful. So once they're rated on the BMS, that quality score is then converted to a final score that's scaled from one to five, kind of like a grading curve. This new rating takes into account the quality of the meat overall, things like fat color, meat color, and the overall ribeye shape. So a cut can have itself amazing color and shape, but without the good marbling, it's getting a lower overall score. That final number of 1 to 5 is then coupled with a letter grade that rates the yield of the meat. In other words, how much meat they were actually able to get from the cow compared to its weight. A is giving you the highest yield at a 72% or higher, with B and C following. Ironically enough, this letter grade doesn't make that much of a difference to us as the consumer. It's actually more used by the producers and distributors when they're setting the price for the meat. And yet, we all fixate on it because years of school education have primed us to always seek out the A's. In reality, though, a Japanese Wagyu rated 5, regardless of the letter, is going to be getting you the top of the top 
top-ranked meat-loving experience. Though, let's just be clear here, it's all a matter of personal taste. I actually went to Japan a few years ago for part of a project and as a birthday present to myself celebrated with a true, genuine Wagyu A5 12-ranked steak, just so I could have the experience and judge it for myself. And I gotta be honest, I didn't like it. The flavor was a super rich umami, like a very nice high-quality steak, which you'd expect, but the texture was literally like eating meat-flavored butter. You bite down and you get zero resistance, your teeth just pass right on through. I never realized how important meat actually having some chew to it was to me, but the disconnect between tasting this extreme umami only for me to bite down and pass through the equivalent of a boba ball of butter meat, it was weird and largely unpleasant. So it would seem like there can be too much of a good thing for some palates. Although, speaking of too much of a good thing, therein lies another problem with Wagyu. If you were paying attention earlier, something I said should have sparked your BS alarm. I said earlier that there are currently two and a half million Wagyu cattle in Japan. But with the huge volume of Wagyu dishes that are currently being offered out there in the world, that number can't possibly be right, can it? I mean, Arby's just hopped on the bandwagon with their Wagyu steak burger. You really think they're serving meat to thousands of people that starts at $34 an ounce? And even if they were, do you think that's really being provided by those two and a half million cows that are lounging around over in Japan? No, it's not. You see, the Wagyu in Wagyu isn't Wagyu. What you're eating at Arby's or Fuddruckers or even most steakhouses likely is isn't Wagyu, or at least it's not Japanese. You see, in the 1990s, Japan started to export some of its cows to Australia and the US. And when Wagyu did finally reach the States, we did everything possible to multiply those bad boys as fast as we could. To the point that today, we have almost 92 million Wagyu cattle compared to Japan's two and a half million. But as you might expect with such a huge number in just two decades, we tended to play pretty fast and loose with both our bloodlines and our rating systems. It's actually happened in the cattle industry before. Take, for instance, the most popular beef brand here in America, the Angus, which originated over in Scotland and now isn't even required by the USDA to have any genetic relation to the Aberdeen Angus from which it derives its name. No joke, all it needs to be sold as Angus here in the US is that it needs to look at least 51% black. As in, they just need to somewhat look like the Aberdeen Angus that they started as, and they'll say, yeah, you know what, good enough, and they'll just slap the label right on there. American Wagyu, it's not that far off. While they were imported from Japan, so they're technically Wagyu, they've also been bred and crossbred here. Sure, they still use similar processes for raising and feeding each cow, so you won't find a large difference of texture between Japanese and American Wagyu, but because American Wagyu's been crossbred with other cows in a fairly unregulated way, and with unspecified percentages of DNA, there is a fairly substantial difference in the flavor. Japanese Wagyu tends to be richer and fattier, meaning it's easier to eat larger quantities of the American stuff than the Japanese, and that is definitely intentional. American Wagyu is bred with Angus, so it can be meatier and can be sold in larger quantities, which translates to less fat. Australian Wagyu, because of the crossbreeding they've done with their own cows, is something of an in-between here. It's not as meaty as the American variety, but decidedly less buttery than the Japanese kind. Japanese Wagyu cows are also raised for longer, around three years or more compared to the US's 18 months. Again, a small difference that adds up to a largely different eating experience. But really, we're kind of arguing a moot point across all of this, because the last nail in the coffin, the thing that tells you that almost all Wagyu is a lie is the fact that restaurants don't even have to listen to regulations at all. They can call whatever beef they want Wagyu. Honestly, they can call the beef whatever they want. Case in point, a subset of Wagyu beef called Kobe. You might have heard of Kobe beef before. If Wagyu is like the Mercedes-Benz of beef, then Kobe is like the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. It is considered to be the top tier of the brand, the best of the best. It's also, fun fact, where the late great Kobe Bryant got his name. His parents saw it at their favorite restaurant and thought it sounded good. True story. Now, officially, Kobe beef can only come from the Hyogo Prefecture in Japan. In fact, to be officially labeled as Kobe in Japan, the cattle have to meet seven separate standards when it's being slaughtered. And these criteria are strict, including things like being from a virgin cow at the time of slaughter. It has to have been born and raised in the prefecture. Its age and weight have to fall within certain boundaries at the time of slaughter. And also, there's a mandatory high BMS rating. Kobe beef needs to score a marbling rating of six or higher on that 12-point scale, meaning that you're never gonna find an A3 Kobe beef. Now, as you might guess, with these high standards, Standards, only a few thousand cattle qualify as Kobe every year, roughly three to five thousand. And what's then imported to the US is only enough for 77 Americans' annual meat consumption. Not 77,000, 77. And yet dozens of restaurants are peddling Kobe sliders, Kobe hot dogs, and all of them are about as real as the Easter Bunny. So why is it that no one's stopping these restaurants from their bold-faced lies? Well, honestly, it's because no one in the US has to. Where Kobe beef is a registered trademark in Japan, the US, yeah, they don't recognize that trademark, which means that any old restaurant or fast food joint
joint like Arby's or McDonald's, if they wanted to, could legally claim any meat as Kobe beef if they just wanted to overcharge you for it. They're just banking on customers not knowing any better and thinking that if it says Kobe beef on the menu, then it has to be Kobe beef. It's a pretty shady practice for a restaurant, but it can also be a pretty profitable one, considering it can make the difference between a $20 steak and an $80 one. The only line that restaurants aren't allowed to cross is to claim that they're selling the genuine article, real Kobe beef from Japan. There have been several class action lawsuits against restaurants on that particular basis. It is a murky line at best, considering that Kobe beef technically has to come from Japan, but not all consumers know that. In reality, there's only eight authorized retailers in the US of Kobe beef. Eight. And only 37 restaurants in the entire country have the certification to sell Kobe. Guess you could say that it's pretty rare. But perhaps the most ironic part of all of this are the dishes where Wagyu and Kobe are being shoved into. More often than not, you're seeing restaurants advertising things like Wagyu burgers, pizza, and hot dogs. But remember, a large part of the experience of the Wagyu is the texture and fattiness. By grinding the meat up to make a patty or shoving it into a casing, you absolutely destroy the marbling and texture that makes that meat so differentiated, so valuable. And then on top of that, all that flavorful fat, you're smashing it down into the griddle or the grill and melting it away before the deliciousness ever reaches your mouth. It'd be like buying a Ferrari just to drive it around in school zones. Which is why, in general, if you're seeing these meats advertised in anything other than a steak form, be wary. Best case, they're using the correct ingredient, they're just not doing it correctly. Worst and more likely case, it means they're just using fancy terminology to upcharge you for basically the same thing. So clearly, while there is a reason why these meats have earned some ridiculously high price tags, it's all been undercut by a lack of regulation and quality control. This has led to confusion in the market and advertisers desperate to use fancy words to get you to spend a few extra bucks on their fast food burger patty. What can qualify as Kobe beef is tiny compared to the demand for it, but because of the prestigious reputation and the name instantly elevating a dish's cost, restaurants actively lie and call regular cheap beef Kobe so they can upcharge you just by using the name. So the next time you find yourself perusing a menu and find Wagyu tacos and Kobe sliders, trust me, it's not worth your time, your money, or your appetite. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.